Some of my best memories from grade school in the 80s came from our weekly visits to the school's computer lab, where my classmates and I fought over who got to play on one of the Apple II computers and their surprisingly fun educational games. How these Apple II games found their way into schools across the U.S. stems from an ingenious marketing strategy from one of tech's most celebrated and controversial icons. And it's a story you don't want to miss, even though you stand a good chance of dying of dysentery. Let's get started. If this is your first time here at the channel, my name is Tyler, and if you love gaming from all generations like we do here at G3, then consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. The story of how the Apple II dominated the education market in the 80s and early 90s actually begins in the late 1970s. The Apple II was officially released in 1977 and was predominantly designed internally by Steve Wozniak. With the development of the sleek plastic casing and marketing campaigns being overseen by Steve Jobs, Wozniak specifically designed the Apple II as the computer that would revolutionize not just the primitive home PC market, but also the video game industry by displaying color graphics and having the ability to design games for the system using the basic programming language. Being the visionary Steve Jobs was, he knew that establishing a solid presence of Apple products in schools meant a strong future for the company. While the pitchman side of Jobs says this was to ensure all children would get an early chance to learn basic computer programming, the businessman sees this as an opportunity to get kids comfortable with Apple computers all through school and ensure brand loyalty and lifelong customers. Apple's big break into American schools came in September 1978 thanks to winning a bid to partner with a Minnesota-based computer organization called the MECC for Educational Software Development. MECC stands for Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium and was founded by the Minnesota State Legislature in 1973 as a group to provide computer services to schools throughout the state. The MECC chose the Apple II due to it using the basic programming language with a cost-effective disk drive and color graphics which they believe would be better received by students than the other considered computers at the time like the Commodore PET and the TRS-80. The MECC created an impressive library of educational games on Apple II compatible floppy disks through the 70s and 80s, ultimately providing over 300 titles. This partnership meant any school in Minnesota could buy the Apple II and the educational software library at cost, which resulted in more than 10,000 Apple II computers being distributed throughout Minnesota schools. The MECC software library became quite lucrative in the early 80s, and the organization decided to go public in 1984, allowing other school programs throughout the U.S. to purchase their games. During this same time, Steve Jobs had been establishing the Apple Education Foundation, which granted Apple II computers to schools across the U.S. and gave lower-budget school districts a chance to finally introduce their students to computers. And since the MECC had such a vast educational software library and was already partnered with Apple, it was the perfect addition to school computer labs across the country. By 1985, over 5,000 school districts across the U.S. were using MEC software, including my own in southern West Virginia. As I said earlier, it was really a battle in my class each week to see who was the first to play on the Apple II. And I vividly remember rifling through those MECC floppy disk collections to snatch up a copy of The Oregon Trail, Odell Lake, or my third most favorite game, Number Munchers. I didn't realize how many other retro gamers like me had similar experiences with the Apple II in school until I was an adult. And oddly enough, most of the games frequently talked about were the games I loved as well, which I think is pretty amazing. And so much for Steve Jobs thinking putting the Apple IIs in schools back in the 80s would create brand loyalty. That guy was way off. I mean, it's not like I wrote the script, recorded the voiceover, and edited this video on a MacBook Pro or anything. Please tell me I'm not alone in having some awesome memories playing Apple II games at school back in the day by giving this video a like and sharing your memories in the comments below. And one more thing. A special shout out to Rando Reviews for finding Mullet Boy in our recent A Boy and His Blob Secrets and History video. Till next time guys, G3 out.